Hello again, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Ball Caps and Bagpipes, the Scottish Baseball Podcast. Um, Glasgow Comets single A first baseman John McKellar. And I'm Jason Durr, former league president and Baseball Scotland Hall of Famer. And lifelong hockey fan, uh, noted Seattle Kraken uh, season ticket holder. Let, let me Durr. tell you, I am like the world's biggest Kraken fan. I can't wait to go visit the <laughs> crack den and uh, throw out whatever hockey lingo I have. Basically, I've watched Slapshot a lot. And I'll just quote that. <laughs> I mean, you can't go wrong with a slap shot. Probably one of the, scre- the greatest uh, sports movies ever made, if not the best. But uh, otherwise, it's, it's, it's Happy Gilmore. But you know, uh, he he went to golf. But you know, he's got all his hockey stuff there. So uh, I, I'm I'm at a loss for hockey movies. You know my feelings on the sport of the sport of golf, Jason. So we'll leave it at that. Yeah, uh, so today- uh, next next time you come over, I'll take you out there for golf. <laughs> I would rather shoot myself in the head. Thank you very much. Um, today, we've got uh, no guest on, but we do have a bit of a packed show. We're going to talk about quite a few things. Obviously, we're going to cover this past Sunday's games. Take a wee look forward at this coming Sunday. We're going to talk 4th of July, um, and we're going to talk Teen Tops, which is your other podcast. So let's uh, get started right away uh, with a look back at this past Sunday. So Sunday's games were a uh, full slate again. No more COVID problems. Uh, hopefully, that's the, the, the lot of it behind us for the season. Um, don't want to get too excited, but uh, let's hope not. Um, we had a full slate of games, uh, beginning with uh, the Oilers hosting the Tapeport Breakers. The Granite City Oilers ran out massive victors, 19-2. Um, so they have, I believe, uh, that gives them a 3-1 and one record, if I'm not mistaken, for the season. Uh, it's, it's complicated because we missed a week, and also there's no, I don't think there's been any update of the, the schedule or the, the score, so we're going off what information we've been able to find uh, from our own investigations here, Jason, but the Oilers are a good start for the season, obviously Tayport, uh, they're still looking for their first victory of the year um, the, when you look at the development side of things, and I've mentioned this on Matt's podcast, the uh, British Baseball podcast uh, this week, when you look at the development side of things, Tayport are doing really well they've had a really hot start in the development games so I think when they as they get closer towards kind of the mid-season we'll start to see them make a real turnaround and I think you'll see a, a, a much better second half from Tayport uh, obviously it's their first uh, season in the league there's a lot of teething problems that come with that and you'll know yourself having kind of pretty much single-handedly built the cannons back in 2010 uh, there's a lot of that goes into that and a process that you need to go through before you start to make uh, headway and start winning games um, but yeah Tayport Still winless. Oilers continue their good start to the season, 19-2. So the uh, best example is this. It was when GBA first joined the league, didn't win a game that first season. Second yeah. season, won the league. So there is there precedent go. for this. You know? Absolutely, so, yeah. You know, Just, uh, uh, yeah. Just I, I'd last... be honest, I'm waiting for Davey Farr to arrest the whole team so they win by forfeit. <laughs> so they won, won, won win this year. But Well... I certain Glasgow Comets are going to Tayport on Sunday, and if ever there was a chance, uh, then <laughs> I think that this might be it, uh, it, knowing some of the characters we've got. Exactly. I, I would drive at least 10 miles per hour under the speed limit just in case you might get pulled over, you know, <laughs> randomly. Drug search, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so. <laughs> Um, uh, we, we love you, Davey. That's good that to that see you. CD I see in your car radio there. Thank you. Oops. <laughs> 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 I'm more of like super troopers, you know, get the sunglasses yeah. out there and, and try, to, try to wish and say cat as many times as I can in the podcast. So we'll see how happens. Um, yeah, so the uh, we'll get on to that a, a wee bit. It's worth mentioning, actually, that this past Sunday in Aberdeen, uh, I see up Mandy Brown, who we've had on the show previously, was at the game and painted uh, the field and the, the game there live. Uh, I've seen the painting. It was fantastic work by Andy, and I believe he might be in Tayport this Sunday. Uh, for our game, so it'll be nice to hopefully uh, hopefully meet Andy in person and put a face to the name. Yeah, I believe he is there. Uh, if you don't know Mark Don- Donaldson from the BT's uh, Caps Off show, got in touch, he retweeted it as well there, so he was excited to see that Scottish baseball was alive and well, and he's a big supporter of us, so uh, hopefully we get him involved in some of the projects that might be happening this offseason. Uh, it's always great to know, get someone that, you know, on TV to at least acknowledge we, we're doing all right. Yeah, and he's a, he's a good hearts man as well, is there, Mark? <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure, sure. I'll, I'll, <laughs> your love of... of Hearts football is about the same as my love is a uh, golf, right? So, you know, we're going <laughs> to. 
So uh, let's move on to the Glasgow Derby, and uh, I have to say, uh, Jason, it was an absolute classic. It's one of the finest games of baseball I've ever been involved with. Um, I didn't play in the the, the AAA National League game. Uh, I played in the development game earlier that day, and I managed to just kind of relax on the bench and just take in uh, what was an absolutely tremendous performance by both teams. Uh, Very clean baseball right throughout. Um, Obviously, very close game. Um, The the end of it was extremely intense. Uh, The beginning of the bottom of the seventh, uh, Santino, who had pitched the entire game, went out, went out there with a 7-5 lead. Uh, the, the Galaxy scored one and had loaded the bases uh, with two away um, before Sari won the game with a strikeout looking. Um, so it was just an exciting uh, finish um, and a great way for the Comets to increase the, the winning record to 3-0. Um, very proud of the guys for the effort and uh, I want to give a shout out as well to Jake. Uh, Jake Wright of the uh, Galaxy, who smashed a three-run home run that that cleared the fence by about 40 feet. It was absolutely insane. Uh, just an amazing shot. Uh, you, you could see that he put everything he had into that, and I think he just saw that ball uh, really well and, and smashed it. Left field, right field, center field? Uh, he pulled it to left. It was just an absolute bomb to left field. Um, just a tremendous home run uh, overall, though. Uh, like I say, a great game of baseball. Uh, very close. Uh, hard luck loss for the Galaxy, especially after they had done the work um, to load the bases uh, in the last inning. Uh, they just weren't able to get that hit. I think Sani dug deep and, and found a wee bit of extra, wee bit extra in the tank that he was able to use to, to pull himself through it to end his performance. Been, so what you're saying it was some spider tack he found late in the he able to get a little more velocity on the ball there. I see how that works out that way. What uh, are you talking about? <laughs> so, you know what? I saw photos of Santi. It's the first time I've seen him in like three years there. I'm yeah. disappointed after two years in Thailand he didn't come back with like dreadlocks. So yeah. <laughs> No offence to Sani, I love the guy, but I'm not sure he's got enough hair left to, to make good looks, <laughs> to be honest, Jason. That's all right, <laughs> but you know what? Uh, it's good to see he's back. It was nice to Absolutely. see some photos and see that he was yeah. doing well, uh, and nice to hear that uh, he's, he's pitching all right. I mean, yeah. I, I imagine the only thing he got close to baseball in Thailand was throwing rocks into the water. Yeah, I mean, I don't think he had played much for quite a while, uh, and then he came back very briefly, uh, for a bit in the end of the 2019 season but then I think he was kind of up in the air of what, what he was doing but he's obviously he's ended up sticking around um, and it, personally I love seeing Sani back he's, a, he's an excellent player he's obviously a very experienced I think he's been playing for about part of two decades uh, he's been playing since he was a kid alongside X-Man and uh, Jason Stott um, and he's a great teammate he's a great laugh uh, I really enjoy having Sani back in the team and uh, it's good to it's good to have a, a guy like that around who's so versatile as well. He can pitch, can play short, can play anywhere, um, and he'll do it to a high level. Yeah, no, I love Sonic. Like I said, I've known him since probably 2006, 2007. Yeah. So, yeah, and you're right, he's a good guy. He always puts a smile on my face. He's always in a good mood. Even when he's in a terrible mood, he's always in a good mood. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, I want to also give a shout out to both Nelson and uh, Jason Stott, who I think put on a coaching masterclass um, this past Sunday toward the end of that game in particular. Um, I think it, their direction and their experience really helped the guys to get through that last couple of at-bats um, in that last inning in particular. Um, the noise was always up, you know, even when it looked like things were going to fall apart toward the end. Um, just a great performance from both teams, but I'm very proud of the guys that they were able to see that one out. And you forgot the most important thing that, that debuted on Sunday. Would that be your sexy new light blue jerseys? Yes. Tell me yeah. about those, man. But you, you talked them up. We saw them. Yeah. They are more beautiful in action than I even anticipated, to be honest. I think that the, the blue jerseys are absolutely fantastic. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get to wear mine during my game because the development team still played in the white. Um, but I, I changed into the, the blue just in case I was needed off the bench late on uh, for the main game and just because I wanted an excuse to, to chuck it on at the park because it's it's absolutely gorgeous and uh, we're one and all with the new jerseys so that's that's always a good woman as well so that's cool I, I'm glad to see you guys have to have home and away jerseys now I think that's a that's a big step uh, yeah. I, I, I miss having those there and I think yeah. there's talk about bringing them back maybe sometime in the future there and, and I, I think because you have so many people playing that you almost definitely need a home and away jerseys just for the fact that they're cool. I mean, if it was my call, if I was to decide, I would just have the blue jerseys and retire the white ones. Um, I think that the blue jerseys give Comets, give the Comets a unique identity of their own. 
but the white jerseys don't kind of because they're also you know they're like an inversion of the galaxy's shirt. I think that each team ultimately should have like an identity, um, and I think that that's what the blue jersey allows us to have. Um, but it's not my call to make, and both jerseys are quite lovely, um, and I'm proud to play in either of them to be honest. Well, if we only knew some sports artists that were involved with branding and illustrations. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know, they, it's a shame we don't have any contacts in that industry. I know. <laughs> <laughs> some people who might be able to do something for you, I don't know. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what we've got just now, I think we'll do for the foreseeable. The, the jerseys are absolutely gorgeous. Um, very comfortable as well. It's like proper, like, it's proper baseball quality jerseys. Um, and the I would be remiss if I didn't mention the white pants. The white pants are gorgeous. Oh, um, man. I don't the think I, gotta I, don't go. know if, I don't know <laughs> if I could ever go back to grey after the after wearing the white ones a couple of times, to be honest. But absolutely stunning. To be fair, like I said, like I, I made the poor decision of getting the Canada's red pinstripe pants, which you just can't find anywhere in the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, unless you're the Philadelphia Phillies, I don't think you'll find them anywhere. Yeah, the Reds had them as well. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was they were awesome. I love I, I love my pinstripe pants. Yeah. yeah that was I honestly dope. think the Reds should always play in pinstripes. I like the I like the pinstripe red jerseys. Well, you know, I mean the funny thing is with the Reds is like ah, they have such a generic jersey. Like I think mm-hmm. they need to go they need to go with like the red the dark or the red tops and then yeah. I, be honest, they, they need red pants. <laughs> Just be red and bring back that 70s flavor. Yeah. Um I mean, you, also also, the, you know, I you love look, pinstripes. So. <laughs> <laughs> I, I said the problem with going to the all red jerseys, you look like a softball team. So, yeah, I mean, the Reds practically are a softball team these days. <laughs> with their stadium and those short fences, it pretty much is the same. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's definitely true. Uh, let's move on to the last day uh, of Sunday's games. It was the Devils and the Cannons. The Edinburgh Derby returned again. And once again, uh, the Devils handed out a massive beating to the Cannons. It was 12-1 to Devils. Um, the Devils seem to be legitimate this year. Uh, it's going to be exciting to see how far their form can take them. Uh, they've had a fantastic start to the season. You were there in person. Uh, I don't know if, how much of the game you actually took in, but you were there for the July the 4th celebrations and you were manning the barbecue, I believe. Yes, you I was. Se- you had those sexy legs of yours out all day. <laughs> um, you just wanted through... a bite of my sausage, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> talk us through the experience of being back at the park, because I know you've uh, you've dived down to training a couple of times, you've taken a few photos, but you were more involved than you've been in, since I think you retired this past Sunday. Talk to me about the experience being back in the game. So recording this on a Friday. So two weeks ago, I had a weekend for myself, which hasn't happened in about two years. And so what do I do? I went to batting practice Friday night and then proceeded to throw batting practice for the first time in three years. So, you know, uh, so yeah, it went all right. I, I probably threw around 250, 300 balls. So it was, you know, after a three year layoff, my arm was well rested. Um, interesting. There's a lot of new people there. Uh, there was only a few people around that I, you know, still new, which is, you know, Paul and Rory, mickey were there and so yeah it was just a completely different experience to kind of just show up and you know be just one of the guys and uh, i really enjoyed it i took batting practice at the end uh was a little bit tired so i didn't do as well as i kind of hoped i was hoping to, you know put a few way deep and uh you know show how i used to play but it just didn't happen uh so that was a lot of fun i spent the next two days on the couch sore because my body can't handle that anymore and and then yeah we had the annual fourth of july party that we we did and i we kind of did as a kind of a fundraiser so it was kind of um my group of expats friends or canadians americans and we, they had the juniors as well there and yeah i ended up raising some money for the team i i would have say i would have watched the game but my back was to it as i barbecued the whole time so uh yeah it, it looked like everyone was having good fun uh we had good weather for it uh, pre- yeah. as soon as the game ended the uh, the showers began and of course we have a flooded man cave so the studio here is a little uh stinky uh i didn't lose too much here uh a couple boxes of baseball cards were which weren't worth much and, uh, and unfortunately i lost my label printer it was on the ground it got wet and now i have to hand write all my damn orders by hand oh, which dear. sucks <laughs> yep so if you're the uh, author for talking about classics in the next couple of weeks please do be patient he will get it to you as soon as he can but he has to hand write everything uh you know, it, you know and he's, uh, he's as you can see he's very old so he might struggle <laughs> with the, the arthritis yeah, yeah. you've been enjoying your retirement far too much i think uh, yeah i have um, you used to you used to hit bangers for fun 
<laughs> yeah. So yeah. Um, yeah, but we'll see. Uh, we kind of talked about maybe helping coaching twice and maybe do every other Friday night and see if we can help the guys there. Again, uh, I think the people with the, who are experienced don't really need much coaching, but it'd be good to go take, you know, 10 or 15 of the uh, newer players and go work with them and try to get them up to speed. Because, I mean, the developmental league is really kind of taking off there. Uh, and I want to see it grow. I, I, gosh, I, I almost want to see them start playing at least five inning games. You know, the, I think the time limit kind of, shorts people but you know i can understand like you do it before the real game or not the real game the triple a game yeah. so I, I mean it's all a time constraint and getting people to agree to stuff um is always hard so i don't think anyone's dying to be in the field at 10 o'clock in the morning so <laughs> as somebody who's playing pretty much exclusively in the single a games or the development games um i you know i've taken the kind of the approach that as a process that's just started you know, like development is going to evolve gradually, hopefully in the next year or so, into single A, which is then going to gradually evolve into a separate single A division with, you know, a proper league structure and stuff like that. So it's important to remember that a lot of this is being trialed at the moment um, and just enjoy the innings this year because, you know, if you put in the work now and get some innings in, it leaves you in good stead moving forward from next year onwards when there's something maybe to play for um, in the development league uh, move as it moves into kind of a single A structure. Um, and obviously there is still the full, the full national league game to stick around for. You never know when you might be needed. So um, it's important to just kind of enjoy the innings that you are getting. Um, and then gradually it's going to turn into something I think a lot bigger. I mean, when you look at the, when you look at the strides that this league's taken just in the last few years, um, it's it's just not a stretch to imagine that it's probably going to evolve faster than even Paul would have imagined it would. I think already that development plays uh, become very popular among guys who, guys and girls who maybe didn't get a lot of innings in, like myself. Uh, you know, kind of fringe players who are now getting a chance to start games, getting a chance to play two three innings, whereas before they would maybe get chucked in for a half inning or getting it back. So it's it's definitely a massive step in the right direction, and I think as we go along this year and try all different things. Um, it's going to turn into something really big. So I think with someone like yourself who's got, you know, so much experience uh, helping out the Edinburgh side of things, that can only be good for the development league um, moving forward. Absolutely. Like I said, I, I, I think I'm not surprised at the success, but I'm pleased to see it's doing really well mm-hmm. and, and pleased to see that it's encouraged people to stick around because you know, yeah. you're right. Um, it is hard. It's a long season. And, you know, you're going to get playing time on the AAA league because yeah. people will always go away. But I think mm-hmm. it's a brilliant time to do it. You build on it next year. Hopefully you can travel a bit more. But again, that means, you know, it's not everyone's traveling. And then, you know, you're going to have those spots open up and you're going to, you know, be able to step in and just hold your own and not try to learn on the fly when you get guys throwing you 75, 80 mile per hour fastballs. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, just uh, it's really good for a team chemistry standpoint as well. Like if I look back to this past Sunday again, you know, we had the two separate team photos taken. One was the triple A and one was the single A guys. You know, we've already got a team spirit among the the development guys where we know roughly kind of who's going to be there every week for both games. So like I've got kind of guys who I would look at and think, right, these are my teammates. This is the infield I'm working with every week. So that's already in place of like, you know, like the separate team chemistry aspect of it. Uh, I can't really speak to any other teams, obviously, but um, from a Comet standpoint, definitely. And I think also from a Galaxy standpoint, uh, from what I've seen in Glasgow, um, it is already turning into kind of, it's organically turned into this entirely separate team chemistry that I'm really excited by um, to look at how this progresses moving forward and, and in the next couple of years. Yeah, I mean, I basically just created four new teams in a, in a new league. So, yep. you know, and, and it's going to be one of those things you go, right, this is what you aspire to. You aspire to AAA, but mm-hmm. you're going to be at single A a while. Uh, yep. I was having a conversation with one of the new girls who uh, introduced herself. Um, and uh, and she's like, I've only been playing for like three weeks. I'm like, look, it's going to take you two years of failure to get decent. Yeah. <laughs> and she's like, okay, I, no one's told me that, but that's a good way to do it. And every guy from Edinburgh's heard me tell the same thing. You know, I tell that story over and over again. About you told it to me, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Very speech. Yeah, I've had yeah. That, um, that same uh, chat with you. But that again, this single lead the development league gives you a place, a starting point, a place where you can make those mistakes for the first couple of years um, and then work your way through whatever position you want to learn to play. 
yep. get better at it, get your confidence and your timing up at the plate. Like that's one of the things that I think is benefiting me in a big way. My eyes in more than it's been in a long time. You know, I feel much more comfortable in the box. Uh, I'm getting to learn a position that I really enjoy playing. Um, my reduced mobility uh, isn't as much of a factor as it would be if I was still in the outfield. Uh, so it's great to be uh, to just be part of that. And yep. uh, like we said, it's it's growing quite a bit already, and it's going to be exciting to see where the single A goes. Um, but yeah, um, what I wanted to touch on uh, is uh, before uh, we uh, uh, before course. we change that. So what about team names? Do you think they team deserve name. team names? For the development of teams, we, we, we actually for, get to the point. For the time being, I think the way it is is fine, but um, I certainly think that moving forward, there could be scope for uh, some changes to the structures of some teams. Like, for instance, if you've got a team who only has a core of players, uh, they might only have one single A team, and that might just be, you know, X team single A. But then if you look at a team like uh, the middle of Glasgow, where you might have a lot more players, yep. you could potentially have one triple A team and multiple single A, yeah, single absolutely. A, you know, so that would be a, 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 a there would be scope there for expansion of single A and the uh, contraction of, of triple A or vice versa. You know, if you've got a core of players, you could have two triple A teams and maybe only one single A team. So there is a lot of different places that this can go, and it's very exciting. Um, but like you say, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what kind of uh team names uh, you know teams will come up with uh, yes come up with sounds like a, it sounds like a promotional listener. thing and everyone gets yeah. to choose their name yeah absolutely yeah um uh-huh. so yeah very exciting um but i wanted to move on to july the 4th obviously this past sunday was the 4th of july and i wanted to come away from baseball to an extent uh, you being a, a seattle native i wanted to ask you about your favorite 4th of july uh, memories uh where well, it could be outside of the game uh, or it could be baseball related uh, back home uh, what are some of your you know most exciting Fourth of July memories uh, from back home? Gosh, um, so obviously back it's a little different back home. We uh, you usually had a trip out to the Indian Reservation and you would get your illegal fireworks over there, and, and that's pretty much standard. Uh, one year I had uh, we had black cats with little firecrackers there with a quick fuse, and uh, my neighbor came over who was probably I don't know ten at the time. Uh, had one blow up in his hand and uh, yeah, had, uh, had, had to go to the hospital for that one. So that, that was pretty memorable for the wrong reasons. Um, and the reason I mentioned that is because he uh, was part of the group. Uh, his dad was part of the group that uh, was trying to purchase the Mariners back in the day. So, uh, so my parents bricked themselves because they thought they would be <laughs> sued by this guy <laughs> because yes, his son had blown up and he was actually really cool about it. And it's, it's yes. called it a life lesson there. So um, yeah. it, it was, it was... <laughs> he's like, ah, don't worry about it. I never wanted them in the first place. <laughs> yeah. He was just like, you know what? It wasn't like you, kids are you, too expensive to put through college. Yeah. So, uh, so that, that was always a number one, you know, we had normally 4th of July, we would go out to our lake house and watch the fire work show out there. So that's pretty memorable there. Again, like there's an Indian reservation that's about 40 minute drive from the lake house and, and we load up stuff and uh, it gets bigger and bigger every year. Um, I know my brother had a good time at the lake house. So maybe next year I'll be home for it. Uh, it's always good fun. Um, you know, the cities usually put on there uh, a good fireworks show, um over here yeah i didn't really celebrate it too much originally but then kind of with baseball it kind of made sense to get an annual fourth of july party so um the first one we did was actually 12 years ago it wasn't with the team but it was from guys with the team uh and it was memorable because I, we we'd, we'd <laughs> met the neighbors for i would you know see them in the hallway and whatnot and he was serbian and he brought us plum brandy and uh, it was pretty much, you know, lethal. <laughs> and so <laughs> it's the one thing everyone kind of remembers is the fact that uh, uh, he, he had brought down the plum brandy to share with us. And we, we ended up getting really tanked on plum brandy. Um, and at the same time, it was one of the neighbors. We got interviewed for a newspaper because mm-hmm. they had found the body of uh, somebody in a couple doors down that had been there for, I think it was like a year. Uh, because they were uh, had all paid everything for the direct debits and they had passed away and, and nobody knew it and, and it was after a year's time she, they figured she'd been dead for a year uh, yeah exactly and they were kind of saying how, how you know how, how, you know what's your sense of neighborhood and, and, and you, how you're the neighbors and we're like well funny enough we're partying with the neighbors um, so this is a completely different experience for us whereas I mean you know you live in a flat you 
probably recognize your neighbors, but you're not having conversations with your, with your neighbors. Yeah. And, and, and it was only till somebody could smell it <clears throat> after a year that they went, oh, right, <laughs> like there's something here that broke. And there was you know, a pile of, you know, of, of letters and stuff that she'd gotten in there. So, uh, so that was kind of an interesting 4th of July. <laughs> that sounds like a, a rather a, an, an upsetting and intriguing 4th of July. It's one of those classic cases of the kind of shut in neighbor that dies and no one like knows it's just exactly crazy. yeah so we had Jesus. so that yeah exactly so that, and that was the first fourth of july party we had and then um uh, and then after that yeah we we our fourth of july parties got bigger and bigger with the team um i think the last year before the last year i was still playing i think we had close to 150 people uh, down at, watching the games there uh it's always it's always the schedule is always set up so cannons and devils play each other for fourth of july yeah and uh yeah, it's uh, it become quite the mainstay. You know, you, I, I make the batter for corn dogs, so I get my one corn dog or two corn dogs every year. And of course, uh, everyone loves the deep fat fryer, and we do the deep fried Twinkies every year, and, and <laughs> it's just fantastic. Thanks, and of course, uh, people you tend to enjoy a few beverages at the same time, uh, and a lot of other stuff gets thrown into the deep fat fryer to go. Hmm, what does this taste <laughs> like? Deep fat fried. Yeah. So we, we've seen quite a few things there. Uh, the kids were quite partial to deep fried Oreos this year, so that was a that was a hit with them. Uh, so yeah, it's good fun. Like I said, it's just more of a chance to kind of get say the expat community because we get a lot of them over here uh together and kind of say hey let's, let's have a little nod to back home um not always celebrate on the fourth it just kind of be whatever days closest but yeah fourth of july weekend yeah yeah exactly so um yeah it's, it's one of my favorite ones I, I always look forward to it it's always a good chance to you know catch up with a lot of people and say hi and and <laughs> this year i just spent the whole time on the barbecue <laughs> and uh, I hope nowadays you always do a, a run of the neighborhood chapter at everyone's door and make sure everyone's okay before we start partying. <laughs> well, it, it was different. Yeah, no, we don't have a problem now, but yeah, it was definitely <laughs> interesting. I think it was in the, yeah, it was definitely in the paper because Lisa was quoted to say, like, I can't even see my neighbors. So it's a little bit yeah. different because she grew up on a farm uh, and so her closest neighbors would be the cows. So. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, so let's move on from 4th of July and that uh, sordidness um, to Tea and Tops. I uh, wanted to quickly cover a wee bit on Tea and Tops, which is your other podcast that you do with uh, the, uh, the inimitable Graham Nelson. Graham. Uh, Graham, yeah, Graham. <laughs> with Graham Nelson. Um, it's a podcast about specifically baseball cards. Why don't you talk to me about what Tea and Tops you know, is uh, in a bit more detail, how it got started and what you guys are up to these days? Well, it was basically a spinoff of us doing the Negro League fundraiser and kind of going, well, I really kind of enjoyed that. It really, really kind of, despite the long hours you put into that, you know, and staying up to three o'clock in the morning, yeah. um, you know, it was just really nice community to talk to and kind of said, Look, I want to keep continuing that somehow. Uh, so I had talked to Graham and, you know, he's kicked around the idea and said, you know what, like, we're both stuck for the next year why don't we just have a conversation and record it? And, and we'll talk about sports cards there. He can talk about all the modern stuff because I have no idea about this stuff. I can cover all the stuff from the junk era stuff, which is kind of the uh, early 80s to early 2000s. And of course, I'm a big fan of these Project 2020 and Project 70 cards. So, you know, we each have our specialties about it. Um, kind of recap what goes in the, in the sports card news. I mean, we, we say it's baseball, but we cover every stuff there. Um, and then we cover stuff about like Topps Bunt. Uh, we did NFTs for a while. And at the same time, we were, you know, chatting to various artists, card artists. Again, our, our good friend, you know, Josh Trout came on the show and, and talked about, about his museum cards that he had done. Um, and yeah, so it's just a good chance to kind of interview people. Uh, we had the amazing Lauren Taylor come on and spent, you know, we, gosh, we talked to her for three hours and I probably get to talk to her for another three hours. Uh, so yeah, it's just kind of just a weekly update on what's going on with sports cards news, you know, uh, if anything comes up and otherwise, you know, try to get people who are involved in the community over here because it's probably slightly bigger than the Scottish baseball community, but probably not by much. Yeah. Uh, and talk about their collections because again, the hobby is not a cheap one. So when you're paying 200 pounds for a box of cards, you know, you're gonna, uh, you're not gonna be able to buy a whole lot of them. So it gives you yeah. kind of a chance to, other collectors actually put, you know, a face to the name and, and go, okay, this is why I collect these people because 
like some people will collect the team some people collect certain sets some people you know it doesn't really matter and then some um, people collect bobby Bonilla. <laughs> bobby Bonilla, exactly i know you gotta yeah. celebrate bobby Bonilla day uh, and yeah. um yeah so it's just a good chance for people to talk about the hobby and we just want to keep on top yeah. of what's going on in the news so it's just yeah um tune in say hi give us crap about what we do and do not know <laughs> yeah so where do people go to find tea and tops so you can find us on all the social media channels at T and Tops. Um, and yeah, we're on Monday night live, Monday night, nine o'clock. Um, unless there's a special interview. Um, we're trying to line up a very special interview with, uh, I would say famous person, but I, it don't, depends on which circles you run in. So <laughs> there's a lot of people I know that are famous on TikTok. I have no idea they are. So <laughs> <laughs> It's not me. <laughs> uh, yeah. But yeah, it's just a lot of fun. So, yeah, I mean, it's just a good way for people that are in the UK and Europe to kind of find out what's going on in the hobby that you may or may not know about. Um, and, and then we're hoping next year we're going to go to the big card show called The National. Um, yeah. And uh, it's like a five-day show, and it's basically the anyone that has high-end cards and elite stuff. So you would see those kind of possibly, you know, somebody might have that $5 million Mickey Mantle card that might show off at the show. Um you're going to have Hall of Famers there signing stuff. I mean, it's a pretty amazing show, and, and we're, we're trying to do it so we can uh, go as media members so we have all access yeah. to things and, and go and, you know, have a nice conversation with people as take we go, oh, my take God. Some, take worth more. all the West and steal cards. <laughs> <laughs> and go, that, that card's worth more than my house, you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, fantastic, man. Um, yeah, so Team Tops, uh, it's on all the usual uh, CB platforms as well, isn't it? It is, yeah. So uh, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, we go live on Twitch and YouTube, uh, of course, on Facebook. And yeah, so you can't miss us there. We're live every nine o'clock. The podcast comes out Wednesday night at nine o'clock, usually. So, but yeah, so, but don't forget, it's you, we're doing the Josh Gibson MVP 20 MVP campaign as well. Yes. So that that's what we're doing there. We're doing it from obviously this show here. Um, I think this week is the final week. I'm supposed to do an interview tonight, but we'll see. Um, and uh, yeah, the card art thing has been pretty interesting. There's been some amazing entries. There's been a few, quite a few guests that we know who uh, did their card art. Um, so yeah, so it, you probably if you're on Twitter, you'll see the competition. You can't miss it. It seems to be everywhere. And some of the judges that are doing this are just absolutely like insanely. Uh, <laughs> High profile people that I can't believe I'm involved with. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I don't know, you had Donna Muscarella, a good Yankee fan and friend of the show on recently. Donna's the best. Donna, Donna and I, uh, yeah, we chatted for a good five hours. So <laughs> we only recorded an hour of it, but the other four hours we stayed up quite late chatting yeah. away. Uh, and I absolutely she... loved her uh, David Cohn story. Yes. Yeah. That was tremendous. <laughs> I'm yes. a big Cohn head myself. Uh, so it was good to hear that story. And it was nice to hear that he was such a lovely guy as well. Uh, that was an uh, amazing story for her, and, and she's got so many more stories like that. Like I, I, I yeah, I, I have to get her on and tell her that. I mean, uh, it was just good fun talking to Donna. She's just a, an amazing person. Yeah, I'm. I'm very hopeful that in the next couple of years we'll get over to the stadium and then take in a game with her and the and James and, and Polly. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna let you leave that one done. He's no. still Polly. Yeah, and Baz. And and Mass, yeah. yes. it would be great. It would be great to be able to get into the stadium with those guys and and just shoot the ship for a few hours and watch a game. So yeah, so we, we've got that, and then we've got to go see a Mets game with Ramon and Herm. Absolutely. And there's yeah. another there's another Mets fan I can't think of, but yes. So we have quite a few people out that way that yeah. um, uh, are, have been lovely enough to uh, come on the show and talk to us, and, and they're amazing people. So, um, but yes, All Star Games next week, hopefully. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, we get the announcement we're looking for, and then the MVP trophy is named after them. So, um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not heard either way, but uh, it's very cool if we can do that. Yeah, we'll treat it as a no news is good news scenario right now. We'll obviously update everybody the next week. Um, let's close it up by looking forward at this coming Sunday. Uh, ah, Sunday but the... you're forgetting one thing before we talk about next week's games. What's that? You did you see who won the? Uh, BSUK Player of the Week. Ren Quantrill. 
Ren Quantrill. So you wonder why the Cannons are so bad. It's been your best player. <laughs> it's busy so, playing yeah. for whatever they call themselves. Uh, the London he's Wanderers. He's always it somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> the London Wanderers, I, and he's yeah. playing for the, the the London Legends. That's what it is. Lancashire yeah. Legends. That's what it is there. So yeah, so so it looks like he had a, a pretty amazing game. If they had to recognize him as the uh, yeah. who the player with the best week this week. So yeah, so when your best player is playing for another team, it doesn't help much. Yeah, hearty congrats though to Ren on that award. Obviously, it's a tough tough stand of the ball down there. So it's good to see him uh, represent the Scotland so well and in in, in kicking some ass down there. Yes. So yeah, we can't. We couldn't forget Ren. Like I said, it was, I was I was waiting to see if you were remember or not. And, <laughs> yeah, so so I wanted to make sure we get the. So yeah, Ren, congratulations. We're all proud yep. of you. Good job. Keep going down there and kicking ass. Super. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now you have about ten minutes before you have to go and pick your dog up. So let's. That's uh, all right. I can just hit, I can just hit stop and go. And you can see. <laughs> I'll just be sitting talking to myself. Um, by the time so, I get back, it'll still be car chatting away. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this coming Sunday is the 11th of July, and we have, once again, a full slate of games. Um, the first game to look at is the Granite City Oilers at the Edinburgh Diamond Devils. Now, that has the rest of, that's the rest of, that's got, that's got the, that could potentially be a really good game of baseball. The Oilers and the Devils have both played fantastic baseball at the moment, so one of those guys is going to have to win. Uh, will it be Steve Evans' lot, or will it be Sylvan and these guys? Uh, it's going to be interesting to see how that game unfolds. Um both teams have had great starts to the season, like I say, so um, something's going to have to give. It's going to be interesting to see uh, if the Oilers can, can take it on the road and beat the Devils. Yep, uh, uh, it's going to be a good game. I'm going to try to see if I can sneak down and catch some of these games and, and, and actually get more of a report on them. Yep, absolutely. Um, now, the Glasgow Comets, and uh, that will be including myself, we're heading out to Tapo for the first time in league play. Uh, it's going to be great to, I haven't been to their field yet, so it's going to be interesting to you know, finally get a chance to visit the field, see what it's all about, uh, to play against Tapo in a league game. And uh, to, like we've mentioned earlier, potentially meet Andy Brown as well, who's going to be apparently there to paint the game. Um, it's going to be an exciting weekend. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. Are you uh, going to slip him 20 quid to get, make sure you're actually painting in the game? And you go, <laughs> ah, that's me in there. That's me. You didn't think about that. Now you're going, oh, man, yeah, I'm going yeah. to... Yeah, like how much to how much to give me a bigger? Uh, never mind. Yeah, <laughs> <I'm> a, <laughs> it's gonna happen. Um, last game is the Glasgow Galaxy, who are hosting the Ember Cannons. Your Cannons have had, like we've mentioned, not the best of starts. I think they were expecting to do better, um, but like we said, obviously, they, one of your key players, Ren, is too busy uh, with other pursuits. Um, Galaxy still a very good baseball team. It's going to be interesting to see uh, if they're able to uh, increase that record to 500 or if the Cannons can figure it out in time for that ball game. I, like I said, this will be a good game. I, I think the Cannons will probably be a little bit stronger. I think it hurts, you know, your, when your best player is down there. Um, but Rory knew this was going to happen on paper. It looked really good at the start. And then you knew when the summer kicked off, it was going to be a little bit of a tougher tougher sell to get the guys out there. But, you know, that you know, I had a chat with them. They're all positive about it. You know, the team looks pretty good. I think there's need a couple things to fall into place. And, you know, I think uh, there'll definitely be someone to worry about. Absolutely, yeah. It's a long season, although it is a truncated season. It's still a long season. Um, and with a season uh, that has a schedule like this one, all it takes is could potentially be uh, two or three weeks of winning in a row to shoot you right up the standings. Um, you know, with less games, like we saw it with Major League Baseball last year, but the, the smaller condensed season meant that all you had to really do was go on a run for a week or two and you were right back in the mix of things. Um, and that's going to be the case as well this year. Yeah, well, I'm, you know what? I, I think I figured out my way to infect your team. So that way, <laughs> only, <laughs> only a few people can make it. I guess that. <laughs> No, actually, I, I actually, I am joking about this, but it's been good to see everyone's followed COVID restrictions and there's not been anything yeah. called off because of, other than the non-travel restrictions there. So mm -hmm. it's, it's amazing to see that baseball is healthy again. Yeah, yeah. Scottish baseball yeah. has done a fantastic job, I think, overall of uh, tackling the COVID restrictions. Um, overall, we've created an environment where the game feels about as normal as it can under these circumstances. We're going to the park, we're having a good time. You know, there's almost no mention or thought about COVID while we're there because it's just become automatic. I think the discipline that everybody has attacked it with has been superb. And across the league, I think everyone has a lot to be proud of. There was one week of call-offs due to a COVID, COVID case in Glasgow. 
uh, but that was completely unrelated to the game. Um, and uh, overall, it's been it's been tremendously handled by Paul and by the teams uh, involved. So massive uh, pat on the back for everyone, I think. Absolutely, I'm gonna take credit for it, even though I wasn't involved. <laughs> thank, thank you. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, after three years and basically no baseball last year, it was just positive to see there's so many people that are interested in the sport. And not only that, it, you know, it's growing and the environment was fun. And, you know, I think everyone's just having a really good time and just be glad that they're back on the field. Absolutely. Let's leave it there. Uh, you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash caps and pipes. You can find us on Twitter at Twitter at caps and pipes. Uh, you can find us on Anchor at anchor.fm slash caps and pipes. And you can find us on YouTube by searching Ball Caps and Buy Pipes. Uh, search your podcast provider of choice as well, Spotify, iTunes, all the rest. Uh, just search Ball Caps and Buy Pipes and you can subscribe to us there. Uh, but please do follow us, subscribe to us, give us uh, give the first two and a bit seasons a listen. We are just getting started, Jason. Uh, Facebook, T and Tops. Uh, obviously, you guys are on the same streaming platform. So while you're at it, go give uh, a follow and a subscription to T and Tops. Um, we are relaunching the NLB Mark stuff as its own separate podcast feed, uh, which I am working on in the background, and I'll uh, have more to release on that very soon. Uh, so it's going to be... eventually get that theme music to you as well. <laughs> yes, I absolutely. So everything is going to be much more structured, and there's going to be play, a specific place to find both. Um, but uh, for now, just jump to our Facebook if you if you want to find anything in particular. Um, everything's still there. Uh, thank you very much from me. I've been John McHale. No, I'm Jason Durr. I hope to see you on the field soon. Absolutely. Bobby Binia. <laughs> yeah.